just gonna be me and you all alone Ain't nobody gonna interrupt this thing, girl All the things I got in my head just for you Yes, I'm thinking super nasty with my thoughts, girl Said I just wanna chill with you, girl And we can make this thing last forever, girl I just wanna chill with you, girl And we can make this thing last forever, girl I like that These niggas, they gon' hate on me yeah, they all gon' fake on me They went and turned they back on me So now I'm gon' make them believe Yeah, I'm gon' make them believe Yeah, I'm gon' make them believe They went and turned they back on me So now I'm gon' make them believe These niggas, they gon' hate on me Yeah, they all gon' fake on me They went and turned they back on me So now I'm gon' make them believe Yeah, I'm gon' make them believe Yeah, I'm gon' make them believe They went and turned they back on me So now I'm gon' make them believe Mind on the milli, real niggas feel me, fake niggas envy Niggas smile in my face, chill, chill, but still wanna kill me In the streets, nigga, it's kill, kill, no joking with the semi And the young die fast, then they get a chance to see a century They see a nigga go hard and still reject the work I lift my head up high and let them bless the work I sit my ass in the studio, ask them bless the church I understand that struggle if you come from the dirt Good family, I'm in the building with the brother Ed. What's up, what's up family? And what's the name of the school in Chicago, the Comedic? The Comedic Institute. The Comedic Institute of Chicago. Yep. And um, so my brother's gonna talk to us about some coming information. We're gonna get some good information from him. Yeah. I guess I got a couple questions from you, for you. My first question, is the study of Kemet a religion? For some people it is. I mean, it's a personal thing. If you have a personal deity, a personal belief system, that's up to you. Uh, my thing is I never want to get in on anybody's faith between you and your personal beliefs, your belief system. You know, there's some people that do take it literally, but I personally don't. You know, those deities wasn't real then and not real now. You know, but the people that do, you know, I don't, even if, anybody that's in any religion, I don't, I don't say you shouldn't worship this, you shouldn't worship that. It's just when you try to, infuse it or add it into history and that's where the friction comes in at for me when you try to when you try to in, interject these religions into history that's what that's what the friction comes in at for me also oh, so you saying no you don't have a problem with religion at all as long as they don't try to interject that into history saying it's real it's to the point right when you know it's not history don't don't try to make it history we got too much work to do and we don't really have time for that okay so i guess okay that, that's 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 so he said it's, it's, it's a religion if you want to use it that way. Saying, because they, they got the netters. I know the netters, right? The netterus, right. The netterus. That's like a deity in, in, in such a way, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a collection of deities. But but the thing is, here, they, 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 from the African perspective, they symbolize aspects of nature. Right. So sometimes you can see a, a natural, he's green. You know, they call it the ocean, the big green. So he may symbolize water. Sometimes he's blue. You know, sometimes even brown or black. It just depends on what the story is. They're, they're anthropomorphic characters that are, that are, that are tell a story. And whatever, like, like set is used for different things at different times. Most of the time, he's the embodiment of disorder. And so he's like a plot device. Just like, it's, you know, a hero had to have a villain. You know, he's always the antithesis of all the other ones. I guess, I guess what I want to try to do is dispel the argument between comedic and... The, the Hebrews or whatever, right? Because I, in, in a sense, I'm not either one of them, right? Uh -huh. So it seems as if, to me, from the outside looking in, sitting on the side, it looked like they saying that, well, a lot of the very similar things. It's just uh, a matter of who want to be first to have done it or who who who's the realist about it or whatever. Because I guess they say, um, but I don't know all the things that they say about Kemet, but they, you know what I mean, they got the, the, the different agendas and they say that, that they was doing crazy things and they was worshiping all types of different gods. And this is how they perceive mm -hmm. when you say the Netherus and all of this thing. Mm -hmm. They looking at that as a, a god too. And I'm trying to say, well, is it? Could it be perceived that way? Well, are they wrong when they do that? 
Well, they wrong when they try to interject themselves in history because they're not there. Okay. okay? Now, uh, people always want to say Kemet is one thing by itself, but Kemet is the last of the great now Valley civilizations. Right. Okay, the start of classical African civilization starts at the end of the last ice age, which is between 150,000 and 170,000 years ago, in Pinnacle Point in South Africa. Okay, these Africans down there were using uh, heat to make tools with. Okay, they were making using egg yolks to make red okra to protect their sun, their skin from the sun. They were uh, they had all kinds of tools, workshops down there, and these universities are going down there excavating all this stuff. This is where civilization starts at the end of the last ice age. The ice age pushes everybody down to the southern part of Africa. Okay, and the, and the parts of Af parts of the world that's not covered in ice. The, the drastic temperature change makes it desolate. We can't grow anything, animals can't live there. So all of humanity is pushed down to this part of the world 150,000 years ago. And once the ice age is over with, the Africans come from the bottom, the southern part of Africa, and then they move up and they move out and they restart civilization. So civilization starts at the bottom, at the southern part of Africa, and then it moves its way up. The Nile Valley River is 4,000 miles, over 4,000 miles long. It's the longest river on the planet, okay? It's like a super highway, and it flows from south to north. So if you look at the, at the very end of Africa, and what I'm telling you about, at Pinnacle Point, they have all these tools, and then as you go up in Africa, you can see the technology develop. You can see the Labombo bone that's in the southern part of Africa that's over 60,000 years old. You know, then you can go further up into the Congo where you got the Ashan uh, Ashango bone that's around 35,000 years old. These are mathematical tools. And as you go further up the river, you can see the technology they're taking with them. So the Nile Valley in Egypt is the culmination, it's the last, the last of the great Nile Valley civilizations. They didn't invent the pyramid or anything like that. The Africans were experimenting with the pyramids made out of silk all the way up. All the way up. And Dr. Ben talked about it, Diot talks about it. You know, but it doesn't just start in Kemet. Kemet is just a baby. It's the last one. But it's the one that we use the most because they had records that still survive today in stone, papyrus. Okay, they're the most famous ones. But that's the it's the culmination of that. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. That makes mm -hmm. make a lot of sense. So you was explaining how they started from southern Africa and moved all the way up. And in this particular time, were there any religions in this in this with the people that, that they carry a religion with them as well any time? Well, religion is, is, is the, the or origin. kind of spirituality. Yes, because the, the origin of religion, you have to explain what's going on here. You're new to this planet. You don't know why the sun is in the, in the sky. Why is the sun in the sky? You know, why does it get cold? Why does it rain? You have to assign values to that in order for you to get some kind of sense to comprehend it. Okay. But see, the thing is, though, the African was here first before anybody else. So while they were developing these little baby steps where they were assigning these fictitious things to forces of nature, eventually they assigned scientific values to it. Okay. And so this is the beginning of science and technology. This, and, and, and it's not fair for somebody to just come along 10 minutes ago and say, well, we did this and we did that because of a religious base. That's heavy what you just said though, right? Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're saying that the myth evolved into the, the actual study of sci scientific study is yeah. what you're saying that they had they had they they, they labeled these Nataroos with a mythical name or identity. Well, okay, let me tell you a story. Well, how, how the the creation story. You got Neb, Geb, and you got Shu. Okay. okay. Uh, I might mix them up. Uh, I think Neb is the Earth, and then it'll be a picture of. I, I don't want to pull it up, but if you get you can, and then Shu is air or moisture. And he breathes that, and then you got uh, Geb, that's the uh, that's the dome of heaven. You can see it with stars in her body and stuff like that. These are this is an understanding of science here. You have the land, and then you got air in between, and then you got the heavens. Okay. That's a scientific concept. That's a scientific concept. And you assign and you assign and you assign natural rules to, to be those values in that concept. That's that's a good point. That's a really good point. Yeah. That's, and so, what's you looking at? You looking at something to do? Yeah, I'm trying to multitask. I'm going to see if I can find a picture of it. I know I got it, but we can still keep talking. I don't want to break no, the flow. That's good. No, I ain't messing up the flow because that's, 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 that's good. So, I want what I, you know, because, so, were there any atheist African people in the world that just, like, had no understanding? They, they, they didn't, was it like how to do it today? How you got atheists who are 
strictly, they like any type of myth, they don't have no understanding of it. They don't want to deal with it at all. Well, Were there any African civilizations like that? Well, John T. Jackson said if you went back to ancient Kemet and asked an Egyptian priest uh, with, with Horus, you know, would he be able to save your soul? And he said the priest would tell you, don't waste your time. <laughs> Horus is never real and he never was real. Okay, you know, your, your spiritual value comes from yourself. Right. You know, and so as far as African spirituality, it was tied into into nature. And so, like, if we needed some firewood or we need to build a house out of a tree, right, we would go apologize to the tree first. Okay. Say, tree, you know what? I respect, I respect your life, you know, and I'd only be taking your life because I absolutely need to make this fire for my family or I need to, or I need to build this house. And so that's, that's the Africanized way of, of, of spirituality. It's connected to everything. And, and when you look at these Abrahamic faiths, the deity is outside of everything. He exists outside of everything. He existed before anything ever existed. That's impossible. That's an un-African concept. Right. Yeah. If you have questions that you would like to ask the streets, contact us at askthestreetsmedia at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching.